Hey everyone, welcome back. So we are back with our marker and paper style that has not been on this channel for a very long time. So I've mentioned in some other videos, but uh, some people in the comments section of previous videos really like this style. They think it has less distractions. Other people really like the whiteboard style where a real person is delivering information. I just want to do the one that is most convenient for you guys to understand the information. So please do leave in the comments below which style you like better, and I will take that into account. So let's talk about the main topic of today. I really like this topic. It's very cool, interesting. It's the difference between distributions. So let me just start by saying that in math and stats, we care a lot about the differences between things. In elementary school, that may have been your first exposure to this, we learned about subtraction, which is just the difference between numbers. What's 3 minus 1? That equals 2. What does it kind of represent behind the scenes? We're saying we have three units of something, and we remove one units of them. How many units do we have left? If we have 12 units of something, we remove 7 units of them, how many units do we have left? So this is pretty easy for us. Then we get to high school and university, maybe we're studying math, so we start learning about linear algebra. We learn that actually these things we learn about called vectors also have the property that we can take differences of them. If we have the vector 3, 12 in a two-dimensional space and we have the vector 1, 7, what's the difference? And we just kind of do it element by element, so it's the same exact thing, we get 2 and 5. So now we learn more about statistics, and we start learning about arguably what I would call the fundamental unit of statistics, which is the distribution. We talk so much about distributions, they're so important, so naturally, the question would arise, if I have two distributions, what is the difference between them? It seems like a weird question to ask, and more specifically, I'm saying here's one distribution. Basically, this is a discrete distribution, and this is another discrete distribution on the same domain, 1, 2, and 3. And I'm asking, give me a single number that captures the difference between these two distributions. And I want you to also have a technique that lets me do this for continuous distributions. If I have two continuous distributions, let's say on the range between minus and positive infinity, what's the difference between these two guys? Seems like a weird but necessary question to ask. And the applications are pretty much limitless. I mean, let's say if you're a professor for a college course and you have two lectures and you have some distribution of midterm scores, you want to know what's the difference between these distributions. Did one class do a lot better than the other? Is, are they close together? Are they far apart distributions? So this is very important. And so the metric I've chosen to talk about in this video, and I want to preface by saying that I actually wrote metric one here, thinking I would talk about many more metrics in this video, but I realized that I really want to get the essence of this distribution difference across rather than going into the nitty gritty of every possible technique. So I'm going to go into the nitty gritty of one technique that I think is easy to understand, and then I'll talk about a few others you can research on your own. So this metric is called the Bhattacharya distance. And given two distributions, it doesn't matter if they're discrete or continuous, although we'll just assume they're discrete for this video to make things a little bit simpler, it's just that these sums become integrals, you know the drill. If we have two distributions, P and Q, the first thing we defined is BC, which comes from B and C. BC of P and Q is given by the sum across all elements on these domains, so this assumes that these two distributions share at least part of their domain. The sum across their uh, common domain elements of the square root of p of x and q of x. So let's unpack this just a little bit. So for example, these two discrete distributions have domain on 1, 2, and 3, so we sum over 1, 2, and 3, and we ask for what's p of 1, and that would be 0 0.2. Multiply that by q of 1, which is 0.33, and that becomes our first element, and then we just do the other ones. So that's this bc coefficient. And then the distance, I put this b here because we're talking about this distance here. This distance between these two distributions is the negative natural log of this quantity we just computed up here. So obviously this does not mean much because we just kind of threw a formula at you here, but what does this formula represent? And I think the easiest way to understand how it works is to plug in some extreme cases. For example, let's say we put in p equals q, so we put in the same distribution in here twice. Both p and q are the same distribution. Then what happens to this coefficient? Well, this coefficient becomes bc of p and p, and now if you think about p of x times p of x, that's going to be p of x squared. When we take the square root of that, you just get p of x back. So this coefficient, bc, just becomes a sum over the domain of p of x, if you sum a probability distribution over its domain, it has to add up to 1 or integrate to 1 if you're talking about continuous things. And so this coefficient is 1. You plug that into your negative natural log. Natural log of 1 is 0, and so the distance is 0, just like we would expect. 
we would expect that if you put the same distribution, you're asking for what's the difference between one distribution and itself, there should be zero distance between those two things. Let's talk about the opposite extreme case. What if p of x times q of x is equal to zero for all x in this domain? What that means basically is that at every point in the domain x, either p or q or both is going to be zero, which is going to cause this product to be zero. That means that these distributions don't agree anywhere. If one is positive somewhere, the other is zero. If that other one is positive somewhere, the original one is zero. So they don't agree anywhere. This is kind of worst case scenario. And we would expect our metric to uh, kind of reflect that. So if we put in a bunch of zeros in here, this BC is going to be zero. You plug in natural log of zero and you get negative infinity. This negative sign brings that to a positive infinity. And so we're saying that if we have this situation between our two distributions where they don't agree anywhere, the difference between them or the distance between them is going to be positive infinity. That makes total sense too. And so we talked about these two corner cases and to just kind of put a bow on this whole story, the closer these two numbers are for each point in this domain, so for each x in this domain, the closer p of x and q of x are, that means that it's going to cause this bc to be bigger overall. If this bc is bigger overall, that means the natural log of this thing is going to be bigger because natural log is monotonically increasing. And putting a negative sign on it means that the distance is going to be smaller overall. So the closer these two things are, that means the distance gets smaller, just as we would expect from a difference metric or a distance metric between two distributions. And that's the main thing. I'm going to go through some examples with you in just a moment. But this is not the only technique, only method to get the difference between two distributions. As you might expect, there's a lot of room for creativity and changes to this uh, formula and technique. And so I'll just name drop some of the other big ones here. KL divergence is a big one too. I chose not to talk about it in this video because it's a little bit more complex, dives into information theory a little bit, but um, I would encourage you to research on your own or if you want me to make a video, any comments are welcome. Hellinger distance is also one that shows up a lot. But in the rest of this video, let's just go through some numeric examples. So namely, we'll be going through the same example here that we wrote. So how would we calculate that? First, we calculate this BC coefficient. It's going to be the sum of these three square roots. The first one's going to be 0 0.2 or 1 fifth times 0.33 or 1 third. The next one's going to be 1 half times 1 third. That's just what you see here. And the last one's going to be 1 third, or sorry, 3 over 10 times 1 third. 3 over 10 times 1 third. That comes out to 0 0.983. We go ahead and take the negative natural log of that, and we find the distance or difference between these two distributions using this distance metric we just talked about is 0 0.0175. That doesn't mean much unless we're comparing it to something. So I have one more case for us. What's the difference between these two distributions? I should not have all these overlapping. What's the difference between these two distributions? So this one is the exact same one you were looking at before, but now we're asking for the difference between this guy and this guy. This one is clearly closer to this distribution than the other blue distribution was. I won't go through the math again, but you get that the distance is now 0 0.0024, whereas before it was 0 0.0175, and now we get it seven times closer. So under this metric we just talked about, these two distributions are seven times closer together than these two distributions. And that kind of fundamentally makes sense. These numbers don't seem as close to these numbers as these guys do. So that's it. Just wanted to kind of show you this really cool technique to look at the difference. Get a single number that captures the difference between two distributions, but at the same time totally note that this is not the only way to do it. I would encourage you to check out these other techniques as well. Alright, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.